And earlier this morning, we mentioned how the Camp David Trilateral Summit is an important first step to institutionalize diplomatic relations between Korea, the U.S., and Japan. We're going to dig a bit deeper by including a visiting professor from Yonsei University Graduate School of International Studies. Joining me in the studio is Professor An Jun Sung. Welcome. Thank you. All right, Professor Ahn, as I mentioned before, institutionalizing seems to be a key word in this Camp David trilateral summit. So could you first explain to us what institutionalizing cooperation actually means? Well, as you can see, that is the first time that three, three, three leaders get together, mm -hmm. right? And they've been discussing this similar issues before in different format as like a sideline for the multilateral platforms. But this is the first time they actually set up, uh, agreed to establish a trial platform to discuss for an, on a regular basis. So internalization is more like, uh, if you look at the contract issue, like in terms of legal perspective, like say there's an oral agreement, you can have orally agreed to buy something and sell something, but why do you want to put it in writing? Because then you want to clear, clarify that terms of agreement, that what they want to do, what they shouldn't do or should do under the agreement. Mm -hmm. that in, in that perspective, institutionalization is very significant that three leaders get together and agree on the terms, on certain terms, and they you know, display on the terms. Right. As you mentioned, in diplomacy, it always comes down to what types of terms are being used. That's why we're going to be looking at the three documents and what types of terminology they've been using. I would like to first look at the commitment to consult. And this one seemed to be mainly stressing security alliances. But how will we see strengthened uh, security when the leaders made it clear that this wouldn't involve a formal alliance commitment or collective defense alliance? It's a very interesting question because I asked myself the same question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the three documents, they signed the three documents, there, there's the, the uh, well, first, the, uh, <laughs> oh, the principles, right? <laughs> principles, and then the, the commitment to concert, right? The three documents that the, if you put together, there's about 3,000 word total. And I come up, and interesting about the spirit side is about 2,200. Wow. This is about majority of the spirit. But the interesting about what, what about the you know, commitment to concert? You know, how many words they have in, in, the, in that document? How many? Yeah, 141. 141, only 141. Out of 3,000, right. Uh -huh. It's very short. I mean, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that the length doesn't really be implying that how much you know, the agreement they have it, but the problem is that we get a big picture here. In terms of international politics, international treaties, agreement, you see how much understanding, common understanding they have it among the three parties. So you put in, in, Say, for example, if you have a, for the split side, you have a, over 2,000 words, means that they agree and they won't really talk about issues. But in terms, uh, from the other side, it took up about the consultation, about commitment to concert is very short because that, you know, they don't really put too much word because they have a less understanding, relatively speaking, in terms of uh, consultation about the commitment. In, and then, plus, it's very interesting because the term consultation is very open used in a, in a, by international organizations like the WTO or United Nations, means that basically then they, they so uh, respect sovereignty of each member means that same. I think same rule apply for that agreement. Basically, implying focusing on the sovereignty of all three member country that they, they don't want to overstep on you know their you know extraterritorial application on any application of the law to their um, not law the, the, the terms of agreement to apply to that specific countries because that there will be the legal issues. Right, and they don't want to step the line over to what was pre-assigned and pre-designated before in terms of alliances. Also the sovereignty issue. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the word count. I would also like to add on to that. We're going to be looking at the spirit of Camp David. There, North Korea was mentioned 10 times. It was actually the region mentioned the most in this document. So I would like to ask, how are the three countries trying to deter North Korea's nuclear threat? And they also mentioned cybersecurity threats, right? Well, interesting question. If you ask North Korea, what do you think? Nothing new, nothing <laughs> surprise, right? <laughs> interesting. Let's look at it different. I think that that part, spirit part, I think is drafted by Korean side, mm -hmm. I think. Why? Because uh, there's cultural difference about U.S. and you know Korea. Right. The Korea, if, you know, in the Korean culture, how we emphasize something, you repeat the same word. You know? That is North very Korea, true. North Korea, North yes. Korea, like freedom, 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 mm -hmm. right? But in, in U.S., in Western culture, you don't repeat it. If right. you repeat the same word, that's really not a good sign for the other, the other side. It's more like you loud, making it louder or something you emphasize some way and you know, put it in a way, in logical way to emphasize in the beginning or first sentence, something like that. So I, the, the, the way I see that in, doesn't really carry much meaning to North Korea because they know it's coming anyway. But the... the um, I think that North Korean issue is that it's there, and that's really imminent issue for South Korean perspective, mm -hmm. the government perspective. 
compared to the U.S. And, and Japan, right? I think that's the one they will emphasize it, but you know, doesn't doesn't matter how many times you emphasize it because that there's issue, the impending issue for North Korea, South Korea, right? Then can we evaluate that as a win for South Korea? Oh, what do you mean? Really? <laughs> as a win, I know it's really hard to define who's uh, a winner in different. <clears throat> there's no winner in international politics, I mm -hmm. say. And then you, there's all there's always a price tag come on. Yeah. The, my concern is that no matter what they do on the, the writing, in written agreement, and you will see that price tag. So my concern is that personally, that what kind of price tag the President Yoon bring to get home mm -hmm. together? That's the issue. They haven't discussed it. And from Japan side, if you look at a big picture, I'm sure that you know Prime Minister, uh, you know, very happy to have a new because that obviously South Korea will share their cost, you know, with whatever financial cost there. But what, what kind of things we're getting from the trilateral summit? Right. That's the issue. And there's some things we talk about, the public talk about the, you know, nuclear, you know, waste in the Fukushima, that's the issue. What are we, what, what are we trying to get in? What are we going to get it? We will be allied, rather than those Korean threat. Mm -hmm. well, that's the one already there, but there's new issue coming up. So we have to, we have to wait and see what happened, how the new administration handled that. You know, For sure. Very tricky issues. It's a very tricky issue. And speaking of price tag, if we stay on the spirit of Camp David, for the first time, South Korea signed off something that seems to have strongly condemned Beijing. So if you take a look at the screen, we have an excerpt from the spirit of Camp David and the document quoted, China's behavior in the South China Sea as dangerous and unlawful. It also said the three leaders maintained their position on Taiwan, calling for a peaceful resolution to cross street issues. So Beijing has been quite assertive with our, you know, position in this trilateral summit. How do you expect relations with South Korea and Beijing to play on from now, though? Well, look at here. First, well, going back to the first question, what about, what about the the, um, the concert, you know, the cooperation mm -hmm. concert, what about the commitment issue? Well, if we, if the foreign, if we were the foreign uh, minister in the Korea, both say in the China, well, you know, you have to do it this way. That's the, what the Biden wanted. But look at the, you know, commitment side. We we have nothing. We just uh, agree on the trilateral cooperate, right? Mm -hmm. Not there's nothing very specific. There's no obligation. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, legal, no legal obligation. Mm -hmm. There's sovereignty issue also. So I get that's why we talk about the length, relative length of three documents. We can have you know way to out. Oh, you know they have to pushing. You know we can do it. That's the only thing we can do. You know you know you know we don't hate you basically. <laughs> you know? We don't have the enemy. You know you know I guess that's the political you know maneuvering. I guess. Mm -hmm. And how do you think relations will roll out with Beijing then? Same thing with North Korea, nothing new, nothing, no surprise. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's time for Chinese Beijing government to change their strategy because I think they're kind of pushing it, they're hard, taking hard player position and a way to pushing it. I, I recently read, read the news about the you know, Chinese government changed the policy about the group tourists to, to visit Korea. Right. But I think a little bit late mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way because they could have show a good, you know, better gesture, taking more, you know, for, you know, for more, as an initiative earlier time, maybe more, more positive light on you know, Korean side. But now it's maybe they need it. They probably knows that, oh, because they, need to they got cornered, maybe they should sending us some gift, you know, basically mm. that's untimely, but well, at least better than nothing. Right? right, better than nothing. And on the brighter note, the retail industry and tourism sector is welcoming this because we'll see more outbound tourists come to Korea. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see for sure. And moving on to the last document, the Camp David Principles. In this document, the leaders highlighted the importance of technology and economic cooperation. Now, how can we ensure a win-win situation for all three countries? Top question. Uh, let me take the devil's advocate. I disagree. Mm. Because the, though, the areas that talk about AI, you know, uh, is, uh, frankly speak, you don't have much AI industry in Korea. To be honest, if we look at the Kospi, the, any any com, co, company have AI technology? There's none actually. Mm -hmm. if Japan is fine doing well. They're doing very well in Andrew, I mean, the humanoid side. It's U.S. obviously they're doing the military side, but Korea is very uh, it's very you know infant stage, very 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 slow on size. But I don't think they will call it cooperation per, per se. But well, it's but I think they're trying to put something IT side because that, I think that's kind of added by Korean side because they want to put IT side. But the uh, idea is that. Do we really have cooperation with Japan, you know, you know, 
in you, Japan, or the, the, you know, that AI stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was long story to see what happened. The political perspective, yes, maybe, but actual, in terms of actual practical implementation of their agreement, that I think different story. Mm -hmm. you know, because the of the capability difference. The different level of the mm -hmm. development side in the specific industries. I see. And I would now like to focus on economic cooperation. I think the Biden administration has emphasized numerous times that this is a very important way to go in order for alliances to be built. And it's really interesting to note that that Biden chose to bring not only the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, into this uh, summit, but also the Commerce Secretary, Gina Raimondo, to the table. What can we read into this? Into this? Just uh, put a plan in English, send me more money, right? Send me <laughs> more money, right? So, I, you know what, if I was there, I would say, what happened to IRA? You know, you say you are the ally, what happened to IRA? We discriminate us, you know, you know we pay to you know, Hyundai and Kia is struggling because of the IRA, and then they just, you know that, if you look it up, there's no electric vehicle mm -hmm. agreement at all, because that's really a hard issue for Korean industry. Is missing out, but right? and then and then ask the Fukushima uh, water waste water. What happened to Fukushima water? Oh, it's not the agenda, right? So, so what are we getting from that agreement? Other than what we have a trilateral agreement. Well, that's important. We had set up, established the trilateral platform. I think that's significant. It's by itself, but what, which, what are we trying to go in gear there, and what are we trying to actually getting out of it? That's the issue we're looking into. You know, greater expectation from the public. Right. What should we have gotten then? Professor. Something tangible, I mm -hmm. guess. Something shown here. Well, we take our the Biden agreed to take our Korea out of the IRA list. You know, mm -hmm. say well, we're ally, but it never happened because that. I, you know, frankly speaking, I think they're targeting you, Korean competitors because mm -hmm. they, you com in, in terms of domestic competition in EV market, Korea is very challenging because they are competing with the U.S. U.S. Pro producers, right? So that's the things that they never say limited. But they do it. But if you want to say, oh, we want to try little happens, let's, uh, let's, let's omit Korea, take it out, Korea and Japan out, the IRA is a watch list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There should have been more tangible results, is what you're saying. Yeah, show, show us your money, right? <laughs> Don't keep, uh, keep calling us for the money. Just show me your, you know, what you're doing, not rather than talking political, you know, that right. rhetoric saying, oh, your freedom, peace, you know, but what are we trying to gain? Exactly. I think you did scratch upon what a lot of people were thinking, but at the same time, it is symbolic to see that institutionalized diplomacy was discussed, and it's the first standalone summit. And another agenda that should have been mentioned but wasn't mentioned was something, a question that uh, question asked by a lot of reporters towards the end of the joint press conference. It was about Japan releasing its treated radioactive water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Now, President Yoon said this wasn't a part of the agenda, but do you think off the record that the leaders did talk about it? Why or why not? Well, I don't think that they did. I think they mm -hmm. talked about it because that's not what they know there was a dispute issue. There's, and plus, there's a public opinion issue. It's not about political leaders get together early on. Because I'm concerned is that Camp David, when I when I first time heard about Camp David meetings, I really be concerned because there was a, I got my personal deja vu. What happened to President Lee Myung Bak at a Camp David? So happily driving go golf cart, you know, playing golf together, and got back. What happened? And you know that medical disease, you know, things happen. Demonstration and his, you know, support way really, you know, plunge. <laughs> it's a very really bad thing happened. So my concern is that now they took take like a baby step. And now they have to, now it's time for the, you know, the mission show what some tangible resource, something, oh, why did they sign this agreement? That's what, that's what we're getting from it, rather than those Korean nuclear threat. Right. I think that's a very good point you made. And now I would like to ask the very last question. President Joe Biden lauded Seoul and Tokyo from coming together and showing political courage, especially at a time when we're seeing the world standing at what he quoted, an inflection point. But now China, North Korea, and Russia, even before the summit, has been saying that this is America's way of countering China and people that clearly are not their allies and creating an Asian form of NATO. So do you think that the trilateral summit will shake up a new geopolitical order? Well, it depends on perspective. I think that's a Joe Biden daydreaming of you know, what happened. It's very different. Even though NATO is not working as he, he hoped, right? NATO is some disagreement on some issues, financial issues also. So I guess the, base, the way they see that uh, from U.S. perspective and the, NATO, or the North Korea or Russia or China perspective difference, right? So I think it's a really political gesture at this moment, unless they will show some, some product, pro, produce something, some tangible result. And that's, uh, we'll see what happens. I think that the Fukushima water, the, 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 the waste issue is a big issue because that they can handle it. The, look at, look at it, actually looking at the, uh, the agreement, they say they try laterally commit to concert, right? To get a group response. 
So, so what's the result of the Fukushima? It means that all government agree on the, you know, dumping the wastewater into the you know, ocean. And I, I want to see how you know the mission say because that according to the that agreement, the Camp David agreement, they have to say we agree to put it together. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, obviously the U.S. already agreed because it's too far away. They don't really care about far away unless you live in you know Hawaii or Guam, right? Yeah, so that's the issue. So we'll have to see how issues unravel from here. But thank you so much, Professor Ani. It was a pleasure to hear from you today. My pleasure.